Good morning, everyone. So thank the chairman for the introduction. I also would like to thank the organization committee for the invitation. I'm Qin Yan Chi from National University of Singapore. And today I will talk about conjugated pi structures with different topologies. My group works on the pi conjugated molecules. And in recent years, we focus on isin-based uh, molecules and materials. Isins, they are polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons consisting of linearly fused benzene rings. They are important materials in the organic electronics. So from isin moieties, uh, then we, we do a lot of uh, modifications, then make uh, N-type isins by attaching electro withdrawn groups on the isin framework. And we also made larger isins uh, non-classical acids. So for ice oil molecules, we can only draw one aromatic six states. So the dying character increase with the extension of a chain lines. So this is the reason why the larger acids they are not stable. So then we have to develop some strategies to stabilize larger acids. One approach is to fuse five membranes on the zigzag edge of acids to make a cyclopental fused acids and acid dimers. And these molecules are very stable. Another approach developed in my group is to fuse, um, sorry, is to introduce heteroatoms uh, on the pair position of a phenolens in the acid framework. Then to make the heterosactic nodimacines, the such molecules may show open shell direct ground state uh, due to recovery um, one or more aromatic six rings. And this type, uh, this type of molecules, after oxidation, they can be also regarded as, as electronic structures of acids. And of, of course, we also made as electronic structures of acids in the neutral state. And by examples, are um, uh, azulene fused uh, oligo acids. And this, the azulene fused acid in the thing, and it shows the radical character in the ground state. The periacins, they are composed of uh, several rows of perifused acid moieties. Usually they have a large radical character and high reactivity. So we have to um, stabilize this, this kind of molecules uh, by bracket groups and the electrodeficient groups. And uh, this is the curve nanographing, and this is the zigzag edge to come nano belt. Of course, we are also working on the other pi systems like microcycles and helices. And today I will mainly talk about uh, periacins and the uh, zigzag edge to come nano belt. Okay, for an M periacins, uh, they are composed of M rows of uh, perifused N acids, and they are good model compounds to investigate the electronic properties of the large sized zigzag edged graphene nanoribbons and nanographies. However, since this of such um, perifused uh, uh, periacids is very challenging uh, due to their open shell diuretical character. Uh, here, some isolated examples um, um, are listed in this page and they are prepared by white chemistry. And this Terence and Kotteranson, okay, they were reported by Professor uh, Kubas group. For Terenson, the direct character is around 54% and the half lifetime is, is around three days and the ambient conditions. For the Kotteranson, the direct character is increased to 91% and the half lifetime is reduced to 15 hours. Okay, so these are peritetracines uh, uh, reported by Professor Wu's group and Professor Feng's group. Uh, when the AR1 and AR2, they are electrodeficient groups. So the half uh, the theoretical character of this molecule is around 51.5% uh, and the half lifetime time is around seven hours. Uh, when the electrodonating groups are used, okay, are attached, uh, such as the beautiful groups and magical groups, okay? Then the directal character is increased to 72% and the half lap time is reduced to three hours under ambient conditions. Recently, Professor Feng's group, okay, same group also reported um, 
uh, another periacin is a perihepticin. This one has 100% diuretical character and 22% tetraeretical character. And this molecule is in situ generated. Okay, and the half lap half lap time is around um, uh, 25 minutes and the inner conditions. Uh, in 2020, um, my group successfully synthesized for three periacin. It contains three rows of tetracin. And this molecule has theoretical character around 95%. The half lap time is around 157 hours and ambient conditions. So this one actually is even more stable than the uh, peritetracins. The good stability is due to attachment of bulky groups, methyl group, and 246-trichlorophenol groups. So one is electrodonating group, another one is electrowithdrawn group. So they have a, a charge transfer character, and they can somehow stabilize the radical species. Now, how to synthesize phos 3 periacin? So we started from molecules five and six. They undergo Zucke coupling reaction to form compound seven. Then compound seven was treated with aldo chloride then to form the dialdo molecules eight. Then eight reacted with ferro chloride to form a uh, fused dialdo compound nine. Okay, then nine reacted with amphetamine by lithium halogen exchange reaction then followed by nucleophilic addition reaction with 246 trichlorobenzaldehyde, then to give a Dow intermediate and um, which underwent a Fredocraft uh, cyclization reaction to give the give this dihydro compound 10. Then this uh, dihydro precursor 10 uh, was treated with um, potassium tetrabutyloxide uh, to give a dianion intermediate. Then it was oxidized by p clonal to give the final phos 3 uh, periacin. This molecule shows a, a distorted conformation due to attachment for uh, large bulky groups. And this image shows the RSH values in each ring. So the hash gains with large negative red numbers are correlated to the aromatic um, 60 rings. And this image shows the HOMA values in each ring. The Haskins sheeted in green with large HOMA values indicate the aromatic six rings. So actually the HOMA values are consistent with the NSS values, okay? And these data are also consistent with the theoretical resonance structure of this molecule, okay? In the theoretical resonance structure, we can draw eight aromatic six rings. So that also means this molecule has a large theoretical character. The high spin densities are along the two zigzag edges. Okay? Uh, from VTSR measurements, we can calculate single to triple gap okay, is around minus 0 0.48 kika per mole. And this is the ECID plot of a 4 3 periacin. We can observe the clockwise ring current delocalized along the periphery, okay, indicating the global aromaticity uh, with two localized benzenoid structure. Okay. And this is the two-dimensional RCSS map. Uh, from this image, we can observe eight localized aromatic sixes with a strong, with a strongly sheeted chemical environment. Okay, so for four three periacin, it has large theoretical character around ninety five percent, and is still reasonably stable. It has unique electronic structure with eight localized aromatic sixties. Okay, in the second part, I will talk about zigzag edged carbon nanobelt. Okay, the single walled carbon nanotubes they are one of the most promising materials for the next generation microelectronics. The length, diameter, and edge structure determine their electronic properties and applications. However, the current production methods of single-watt carbon nanotubes are mainly based on harsh conditions, such as arc discharge and laser vaporization. Uh, so, I'd, I'd, I'm sorry. So, the the synthesis of a uh, single wall carbon nanotubes by wet chemistry is not possible. Okay. Um, 
some research groups then um, uh, have tried to synthesize the side wall fragments of a single uh, sing, um, uh, carbon nanotubes, and they, they are fully conjugated carbon nanobells. However, since this is a fully conjugated carbon nanobells, it is still very challenging and due to large strain. Before 2020, only few examples were reported. Okay, for example, this one is a segment of a 66 carbon nanotube. It was reported by Professor Itami and Professor Sigawa in 2017. And this one is a chiral carbon nanobelt uh, reported by Professor Miyoshiku in uh, 2018. Okay, and this is the finite finin nanotube. It was reported by Professor Isobe's group in uh, 2019. Uh, several research groups also tried to synthesize zigzag edged common nanobells. Okay, they are uh, succulent nanotubes. The synthesis of a succulent is very difficult. Usually, the hydrogenated and addition products uh, were obtained. This is because the succulent actually has high react reactivity along the zigzag edges, and also the succulent also has a large strain. Okay, so my group actually uh, has worked on this project uh, for many years. And in the last year, 2020, uh, we have uh, successfully prepared a segment of 12-0 carbon nanotube. So it's a uh, octobenzoyl 12 succasine. Um, from 2020 to 2021, uh, some, some groups also reported zigzag carbon nanobells. So for example, this one, as a six eight succulent inductive, and this one um, was reported by Professor Wang's group, and it was detected in the gas phase. Um, this one is that uh, Gobunzo twelve succulent, um, it was reported by Professor Sigwa and Professor Itamin's group in twenty twenty, and the structure of this molecule was confirmed by single crystal. Professor Miao's group recently also reported. Uh, the zigzag edged carbon nanobells. And these two molecules present a wave like arrangement of Haskins in the iron road lattice of a 16-0 and 24-0 single wall carbon nanotubes. Okay, let's see how to synthesize our octobenzoyl 12 succasine. We started from molecules one and two. Okay, and this tetrabromide first reactivates and bisphosphorin to form dibenzine. Then it reactivates bisphosphorin by this other direction to give the synthesis three and transosmer four. This synthesis three actually has a C-shaped conformation. It can reactivate molecule one again by this other direction, then to form compound five. Okay, it's a tetrapoxy nanobelt. Treatment of this uh, tetrapoxy nanobelt of this titanium tetrachloride and lithium aluminum hydride, then we can get this a fully conjugated carbon nanobelt. Okay, it's uh, octobenzo 12 succasine. So here, the tetrabutyl phenol groups are crucial. So um, actually, it, uh, these groups can avoid hydrogenation reaction in the last step. The single crystals of uh, tetrapoxy nanobelts and the final products were also obtained. Okay, so for this tetrapoxy nanobelt, it shows a box like conformation with tetrapoxy units located at the corners. The edge length is around 7.8 angstrom. For the final product, because it's fully conjugated, it shows highly symmetric cylinder like conformation. The inner diameter is around 9.2 angstrom. Okay, so image E and F. Uh, they are packing structures of a final product. It shows one-dimensional channels by hydrogen, uh, carbon hydrogen pi and Vandervas interactions. So MR spectra of a tetrapoxy nanobelt and final product were also recorded. For the tetrapoxy nanobelt, okay, the attached tetrabutyl phenol groups point outward the box so they can freely rotate. In this case, the protons, uh, these protons in the aromatic region only show one set of signals, okay? For the final product, because it's fully conjugated and rigid, in this case, the third beautiful phenol groups 
are almost perpendicular to the zigzag edge. Okay, in this case, and um, these funnel groups cannot freely rotate. So they are lo located at a relatively conjective environment and needing the different chemical environments for the protons pointing outside and inside the cavity. For example, for the protons B and the C and the B pointing outside the cavity, they remain, um, they remain at this uh, uh, the low field, okay? But for the protons E and the D pointing inside the cavity, so they move to the high field due to the sheeting effect, okay? And for the protons A on the pairing units, they are also located at a relatively congestive environment. So the resonance of protons A also shift to the um, high field due to sheeting effect. And this is the HDID plot for the final product. And we can observe the clockwise ring current localized on these phenolons. Actually, they are runs A and runs C, okay? So final product actually is a fully conjugated carbon nanobelt and with localized aromaticity. And this is the three-dimensional RCSS map. It shows a spherical sheeting area inside the carbon nanobelt. So this, this one, actually the calculated data is consistent with the NMR data. So, um, so finally, I, I, will, I would like to give a summary for my talk. So today I talk about some novel pi structures, including the periacins and zigzag edged carbon nanobelt. So I talk about their synthesis, stability, electronic structure, ground state, and aromaticity. So finally, I would like to thank my students for their hard work and also my collaborators for their great help and also financial support. Okay, thank you for your attention.